Hey guys, so it's Hink here. Today we're gonna to be discussing a topic that comes up all the time. What is the role of actually calories? Do you need a calorie surplus or a calorie deficit when it comes to getting bigger downstairs? We're gonna break down the data and I'm gonna let you guys make your conclusion on the data today. Of course, I'm gonna give you my opinion. So, so let's get into it. Before we get into it, we need to talk about several different steps. When we're talking about basically enlargement, we're talking about several different processes. So growth and repair of hormones, testosterone, you know, sex hormone formation, angiogenesis or arteriogenesis, formation of new blood vessels, protein synthesis, and injury recovery. We're gonna be talking about the role of calories in each of those different things. So you guys know me, you know what I'm gonna start with. So at least here in America, the obesity rate is over 42%. Over 50% of people are overweight, but the obesity rate is 42%. That's insane, guys. Just by going in a calorie deficit alone right there, if you lose 25 to 50 pounds, you're gonna be gaining a half inch to an inch in visible length. Just by being in a calorie deficit, that would be all most guys would need to feel better about themselves because once again, the smaller the plate, the bigger the steak is going to look. Not only are you gonna have more of your visible self, you know, visible, you're proportionally gonna look bigger because the rest of your body is smaller, but you're also things like your, your blood flow is going to improve, you're gonna be getting better like erection quality. That alone should be like, I could end the video here, the end, be in a calorie deficit because it's gonna be applicable to over 50% of people, but we're not gonna stop there. Now we're gonna talk about HGH. So HDH or IGF-1, the different growth hormones, when it comes to being in a calorie deficit, is it important for these things? You know, why do we care in the first place? Well, when we are doing these type of exercises, especially when it comes to like injury repair and recovery, things like growth hormone are gonna be vital in that process as far as keeping you healthy. So not only is it gonna be important in keeping you healthy when we're inflicting trauma upon our downstairs regions, it can also help with things like improving metabolism, increasing lean tissue mass, decreasing fat as well. It's important through all of these processes. So this paper right here showed that when you are obese or eating in a chronic calorie surplus, you are going to have decreased levels of growth hormone. And when you lose weight or when you're in a chronic calorie restriction, okay, or just calorie deficit in general, it can increase your levels of both IGF-1 and growth hormone. And here's another, another study here that showed that once again, humans that lose weight have an increase in growth hormone secretion. It's part of the reason why I choose to intermittent fast because once again, there's data, intermittent fasting can actually increase growth hormone levels as well. So you don't need to be in a calorie surplus to regulate IGF-1 or growth hormone. So now we're gonna talk about sex hormone formation or testosterone. This is a process called steroidogenesis for those that, that don't know what the general term of like forming sex hormones is called. So not only do we care about actual testosterone, but guys, the role of estrogen is actually vitally important, especially when it comes to erectile function, because here's a paper here that shows that actually estradiol, one of the major estrogens, is directly related to regulating the actual nitric oxide pathway. And this similar pathway of like nitric oxide is also important in new blood vessel formation. When we're, we're gonna talk more about like, you know, arteriogenesis and angiogenesis, angiogenesis, but actually as far as the health of the endothelial cells, you know, that's what this paper shows that estrogen is important in this pathway as well. So do you need to be in a calorie surplus for to have healthy steroidogenesis, testosterone and estrogen? Well, guys, what do you think? No. So before, oh my God, I can see the keyboard warriors now. You know, oh, and, oh actually, Hink, but just let me get to the data. So here's a paper here that showed that actually six months of calorie restriction produced favorable alterations in physiological, biochemical, and hormonal outcome in a trial looking at 48 men and women who underwent a calorie restriction of 75% of their required calories, okay? Here's another study here that shows that in obese and overweight men that went through fat loss and lower calorie diets seem to have improvement in their erectile function and testosterone levels from being in that calorie deficit. But conversely guys, too much estrogen can actually lead to problems. That's fat is basically converted into estrogen through a, an enzyme called aromatase. Basically, there's many other pathways. You know, I'm sure that like Dr. Jed is gonna, oh, well, actually, Hink. But anyways, guys, if you are very obese, you have higher rates of estrogen and too much estrogen is detrimental, especially in obviously men. What are you doing? I don't know, I've had hot flashes all shifted. My nipples are killing me. Why are we talking about your nipples? We're, we're not. Just go do what you're doing here. Guys. 
Fun fact, guys, one of the leading causes, the leading risk factors for cancer now is actually obesity, a largely, especially breast cancer in women for this exact same reason. As excess fat leads to excess estrogen, ex excess estrogen leads to increased rates of breast cancer. So, you know, fun fact, so for those that are obese, okay, in obese individuals that have low testosterone and elevated estrogen, a calorie deficit as low as 800 calories for eight weeks, a calorie restriction is able to increase testosterone levels and decrease estrogen levels in this paper, guys. So once again, calorie restriction, good thing. So here's a paper here, because of course, guys, yes, if you are in too long of a calorie deficit and is, or too severe of a calorie deficit, that can lead to problems. I'm not gonna be just like, oh no, only calorie deficit is good, of course. Here's a paper that showed that, honestly, if you're in calorie restriction for around seven to eight years, okay, that's when you actually started to see a decrease in sex hormone concentrations. And this paper right here demonstrated that it took a calorie restriction of 20 to 35% to provide a substantial decrease in estrogen levels in women when combined with moderate intensity exercise. And this trial was actually done in women that had a normal BMI. This study right here also showed that in obese men, calorie restriction was able to increase testosterone and actually improve testicular function and reduce harmful levels of estrogen. This paper right here showed that in non-obese individuals that embark on a 35% calorie deficit over two years did not experience a decrease in testosterone levels. It also showed that in non-obese individuals who calorie restricted it had positive effects and no negative effects on sexual health and health related quality of life, improving things such as sex drive and improved sleep duration. So yes, guys, once again, extreme calorie deprivation does make a difference. So when we're talking about like bodybuilders that are trying to reach the single digit body fat, okay, in 5%, like in this study here, it showed that when there is a dramatic drop off, that there is a dramatic drop off in testosterone by about three fourths testosterone level. However, it took a calorie deficit of approximately, leading to approximately one kilogram or 2.2 pounds per week to show that testosterone dropped more than 30%. However, when you lose weight at a rate of approximately one pound per week, testosterone did not demonstrate a reduction until after the first six weeks of being in a prominent calorie deficit. And that's already in extremely lean individuals, guys. So most of you watching this are not extremely lean. I am not extremely lean. I am definitely not single digit body fat. So all of us could stand to be in a calorie deficit for improved testosterone to, especially to estrogen ratio, improve sleep, improve quality of life. So therefore, you don't need to be in a calorie surplus for, for healthy hormonal regulation. So what's next? Angiogenesis, arteriogenesis. So this is essentially either the formation of new blood vessels or the conversion of existing like micro vessels into bigger blood vessels to get healthy blood flow to your downstairs region. So is this, you know, it's honestly kind of arguable in my opinion whether or not this is necessary for PE, but for purposes of this video, we're just gonna talk about being in a calorie deficit. Does it matter for this? Do you need to be in a calorie surplus for healthy arteriogenesis? Of course, um, you know, no, guys, and the answer is no. Here's some papers. So here's a paper here that demonstrated that endothelial cells are negatively impacted by obesity. So once again, it would benefit us to be in a calorie deficit to not be obese. Evidence one, okay? Here's a rat model that actually looked at angiogenesis and it actually showed that in like older rats that actually had a calorie restriction had a similar arteriogenesis, angiogenesis as compared to younger rats. So if you're an old rat like me and you want, a, you want blood flow like a young rat, you should be in a calorie deficit. And here's a paper here that demonstrated that when you are in a moderate calorie restriction, you can improve several different aspects of endothelial cell function regardless of whether there's a decrease in actual body mass. You also have a significant improvement in nitric oxide associated with calorie restriction and increased weight loss. Like, I'm not gonna go hot tank here, guys, but like, Anyway, we'll, we'll wait to the conclusion. Finally, guys, we're gonna talk about protein synthesis. So yes, we do not have skeletal muscle in our penis, but we do have smooth muscle. Protein synthesis is gonna be needed to create more smooth muscle as well. So do you need to be in a calorie surplus to have appropriate protein synthesis? Give me your get, right in the comments right now, do you think you need a calorie surplus? No. So here's a paper that looked at it actually in older adults that are undergoing calorie restriction. It showed that calorie restriction did not impair protein synthesis. 
Here's a study on mice, once again, that demonstrated that when you have calorie restricted mice, they actually maintain their protein synthesis until they went into like a severe calorie deficit. Your body wants to keep you in what we call homeostasis, functioning at a normal level. So even if you're in a calorie deficit, you are, your body has still ways of maintaining things like protein synthesis. No guys, being in a calorie deficit does not impair protein synthesis. So we're not talking about skeletal muscle. All you meatheads are gonna be, no, you need two grams of protein per pound of body weight if you're gonna gain muscle. We're not talking about skeletal muscle. We're not talking about powerlifting, guys. We're talking about actual penile anatomy, things that actually matter. And finally, guys, we're gonna talk about recovering from injury, okay? Injury recovery, especially some of the micro trauma or just plain old trauma that can occur to your downstairs region when we're doing PE. So this study right here showed that poor wound healing can occur with severe calorie restriction. However, you need basically a 40% reduction in calories before you actually start to impair your wound healing. This study right here. Another one showed that in calorie restricted mice, the ability to recover wounds is preserved. However, you do need like appropriate refeeding, but it's showing that you need maintenance calories. You don't need to be in a severe deficit. You don't need to be in a surplus either. You just need to be eating adequate amount of calories for Now guys, this is talking about like actual wound healing, like damage to the tissue, like a cut or like a torn muscle, etc. This isn't talking about micro trauma. So just take it with a grain of salt and it's an animal model. This study from Harvard actually looked at like how much of a calorie deficit occurs in order to actually delay wound healing. And this is in people particularly at risk of like being malnourished, like elderly or you know, potentially people that have disabled or chronically ill. What they found is that a loss of lean body mass, more than 15% of the total is what is going to actually impair wound healing. So lean muscle mass, this isn't talking about fat loss. This isn't talking, oh, if you lose 15% of your fat, it, no, it's talking about actual muscle mass. So if you are in a calorie deficit so severe that you actually start to lose 15% of your muscle mass, that is what is going to impair your wound healing, guys. Not for most people who have some fat that they can, that they can part with. So guys, like before I go hot take, <laughs> Check out our Vigor on Amazon, okay? Great product, Amazon reviews. It's especially things like endothelial function and even erection quality can help dramatically. If you wanna boost your testosterone, guys, especially if you're in a severe calorie deficit, this is specifically designed to do that. And of course, if you just wanna increase your sperm and your semen quality and volume, you, we have our virility here, guys. What is my conclusion? Like, it's it's absolutely stupid. Uh, you know, I, I don't wanna, I'm not calling people stupid. I just, I hate when people, there was a guy, I'm not even gonna call his name, but he uses a bunch of pseudoscience to say like, oh, no, you have to eat in a surplus with my technique. That's absolute dog shit bullshit. It is not true at all. You do not, in fact, most of the evidence actually points to you being in a calorie deficit would be more beneficial when it comes to actually like, gains and enlargement. It doesn't help with growth and repair. It doesn't help with angiogenesis. It doesn't help with testosterone. It doesn't help with protein synthesis. And it doesn't help with injury recovery to be in a surplus. And most of the evidence actually points to being in a caloric deficit, guys. So that's my take. No, you don't need to be in a calorie deficit. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. <laughs> Catch you guys on the next one. Peace and love.